Um, hey guys, I believe we're streaming now. If you guys are in the comment section, let me know by commenting, of course. I'm here with Roland Sanchez of Roland Sanchez Photography. He's a local photographer in my area. And today we're going to be talking about a couple different things, including MagMod. And I don't know if you guys saw already, but the new Godox 8400 Pro, it was something that was just leaked, I want to say just yesterday. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let Roland, Roland do a little bit of an intro while I eat some of the pizza because this is Portraits Pizza <laughs> Photography. So yeah, again, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, but I do want to dedicate a little bit of the question part towards the middle, towards the end, kind of. So if you guys have questions, definitely think about um, the best way to ask the question so I can help you out. But again, we're going to do a little bit of an intro first. Hey guys, my name is uh, Roland Sanchez. I, uh I've uh, been uh, doing photography since about 1984, when I was in high school, so that pretty much says how old I am. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I got into digital photography back in, uh, let's see, in 2010. So I, I, I started doing, uh, I bought a Canon 40D and uh, used a kit lens, so uh, I played around with it a lot. It was new to me. I was used to shooting with a Canon AE, AE-1. So you started with the Canon 40D? The Digital. Digital. Oh, digital. digital. Okay. But when I first started photography, film photography, I started actually in high school. So, but we were shooting, I was shooting with a Canon AE-1, I believe. That's the, it's an old model. Look it up. But it's, it's AE-1? AE-1. I think I know how it looks like. But, Canon um, AE-1. That was just, it was, uh, Doing film photography, it's really hard because I mean you don't know what you're getting. You can't chimp in the back of your camera and see what you're getting, <laughs> kind of like we do right now. But uh, you know, uh, just taking the uh, film, developing it, and then oh. going into uh, the audio is probably really bad right now. It's something I totally forgot. So I don't know. I guess talk a little bit. <laughs> I'm talking a little bit louder. Better. You forgot the mics. Yeah, I'm gonna All go right. find the mic while Roland has the Roland show right now. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, just. Uh, uh, through the years, switching to digital, I mean, I ca cameras were, digital cameras when they first came out, they were just so expensive, so uh, I managed to hang on to my uh, AE-1 and did all, man, spent a lot of, did a lot of uh, experiments with them, I guess, uh, shot a lot of rolls and a lot of rolls, and, I mean, since you can't see it, you don't know what you're getting until you actually uh, develop the actual film, so... Uh, also, the chemicals, you know, when you're developing your own film, it's just hard on your skin and everything. I was like, well, you don't need rubber gloves. Yeah. We would just I don't know anything about that process. I honestly don't. And so. in a dark room, I've ruined a lot of paper by actually turning the light off accidentally and ruined hundreds of sheets of regular paper that we print on. So, uh, I also learned how to do dodge and burn. Dodge and burn with uh, film. It's totally different than doing it and now. It's a lot easier now. On Photoshop, so uh, but uh, yeah, dodge and burn was really hard to do. I, I remember taking the little card, turning on the little, turn on the little light. You're um, burning on the actual Wait, film paper. I think it's huh? a little too loud, but I think. A little bit too loud. Yeah. So testing me, one, two, three. Testing. Yeah. Let us let us know in the comments if it sounds a lot better than it just previously did. So let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix this real quick. Yeah, we forgot the mics, guys, uh, or initially. So I hope you were able to uh, hear the audio when we first started. Uh, for those that joined us when we first started. Okay. Can you talk? Hello. Testing one, two. Can okay, you that's fine. It's better. This is like being in the Wayne's World. Wayne's okay. World, like in the basement of Wayne's World. For you, for those that know who Wayne's World is. Okay. Ready? I believe we're good now. Think we're good. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That look good? How's my hair? Te technical difficulties. <laughs> Let's see. I'm like the yeah. Hispanic Joe Grimes here. Let me just give a quick shout out to everybody who's tuned in so far. Michael, Ralph, Scott, Arnold, everybody. Sheely show? Arnold, Omar, Scott. Omar, what's up, Omar? What's up, everybody? Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to let Roland talk a little bit more so I can eat some pizza, and then we'll talk about the MagMod system. If you guys are watching this because you're interested about the MagMods products, or the new Godox, well, it's leaked, so I don't know if it's a real thing or not, but I'm pretty sure it looked like it was real, so. Um, yeah, we're we'll also, about that. yeah, I'm also gonna show uh, the progress of my photography, like, uh, you know, when I first started shooting digital, it, everything 
besides, I mean, exposure and all that stuff I already knew, but uh, as far as the settings and the digital and learning how to, uh, what meant what was, uh, it, it was a, it was a learning curve, just a little one, but the biggest thing that I had to learn was Lightroom and Photoshop. That was the biggest challenge that I ever had. So when I, I'm gonna show here the progress of my photography from 2010 all the way till, uh, I had a photo shoot all the way till about just a few days ago. So I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah, that. when did the last, when was your last my shoot? My last shoot this was, past yeah, this, uh, actually it was uh, two days ago. Or yesterday, no, it was yesterday. Eli, Eli was with me, so. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just oh, post it. I just wanted to kind of briefly explain how I know Joey. Oh, yeah. Francisco here. Uh, we call him Joey's friends because uh, when I first, I would always call him Francisco and he's like, oh, you, you, know, you can call me Joey. I was like, oh, okay, that's a little bit, you know, easier than Francisco. So I just call him Joey. But uh, the, how I met him is uh, when I first, I first moved here back about five or six years ago from Dallas, Fort Worth. So uh, I moved down here and I was wanting to get back into photography and stuff. And I would reach out to other photographers and uh, through Facebook and, uh, I wouldn't get not a very friendly bunch out here. Yeah, when we first moved here. I don't know if it's just local thing or just everywhere in general. Yeah, I, I uh, reached out to a photographer, no names here. I reached out to a photographer that was popular, and uh, and uh, you know I was like, wow, I like I like that style. You know, I'd, I'd like to learn a little bit, but uh, nope, she just turned me down. And then she posted on Facebook, hey guys or models, watch out for this guy with camera. You know, and uh, uh, okay. uh, I hate, I hate that. You yeah, know, I'm trying to learn for 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 Roland and for Eli and for Jeff, the ones that I've I've met with and I've done I think already live video with both Eli and Jeff now Roland. Yeah. Like we we met each other through kind of like wanting to just reach out to other photographers and we just kind of just connected. And definitely is not the case for every kind of uh, interaction that we've had. So you gotta. You really have to put yourself out there, and of course, there's going to be cases where people are just not so friendly. So yeah, so it kind of sucks in that aspect. Yeah, it does. And so uh, I was. Uh, so we said raise a value. Oh, okay. raise it just a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, go out and practice with my camera and stuff. He's always like, it was just sitting there wasting away, and I'm like, shoot. I, said, I think back then a 40D with a kit lens was like. 850 bucks or something, no, about a thousand dollars, close to a thousand bucks. So that was a lot of money to me. Uh, but uh, there you go. I was just looking through Facebook and uh, that it was on a Saturday, I remember. Saturday morning, I got on Facebook and I was like, I was, I'm doing a, uh, I, that day I was going to do a photo shoot in the afternoon for a couple of my friends that were uh, graduating from the university the following week. So they're like, hey, can you do grad photos with, for me? So I had my, uh, Alien B, yeah, six, like, 800, the 600, Alien B, and uh, I had the 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 47 inch Paw C buff that I still use to this day. Um, let's see, so I put, I was like, you know, just on Facebook, and all of a sudden, Joey pops up in my feed, and it says, "Hey, for ta anybody, uh, you know, doing a shoot today, I'd yeah, like to come. Me, I'd like to help, come. Right? I'd like to come assist." And I'm like, cool, man. I need it. I need an assistant because uh, the 47 inch, any wind, it'll just blow it completely away. I can't remember if it was windy that day. I don't remember. I don't know, but this it's good to just be um, ca cautious of what, like, what if the wind gets picks up? Yeah. Yeah, and that was back in 2014. Uh, so, uh, like I said, you know, started in 2010. I'm gonna show a photo of what my photography looked like in 2010. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna show you a photo as well of what it looked like in 2014 when Joey helped me and of course we're in progress but I reached out to him and uh, he showed up and was like hey I'm Francisco and so uh, we you know he uh, I got stuck with some settings that I didn't understand how you know how the lighting was actually working with uh, with my camera and just getting the ambient light and all that and I was like man I was all over the place with settings remember I think when you started you were shooting really high ISOs and and you were like all over the place when you first started shooting, right? When I first started shooting? Yeah, when you first started shooting, because yeah. I saw somewhere where you're like yeah. 6400 ISO with yeah. this and that. I, so. I think I showed you some stuff. <laughs> Real quick, guys, um, how's the video quality right now? Because like from what I'm seeing on my screen, it looks kind of bad. Yeah, Hopefully that's not so. what you guys are seeing because I want it to be a little bit better. 
because I don't want it, to, want it to look like we're like in what 360p. I don't, <laughs> I don't want that. I want at Old least school. at least 720. So yeah, it's choppy. So where where was I? Pepsi, the, Pepsi, oh, right here, guys. Pepsi right there. Water. Oh man, it, it says it's fuzzy, but hopefully it fixes or it gets better. I don't know how to change that. We'll see about that right now. All right. Okay, but um, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, on the oh, I was. Uh, so he was guiding me through the whole thing. It's like, oh, you know, get the ambient light. You gotta adjust your uh, adjust your ISO from where you were at. I think I was shooting maybe it was outdoors, middle of the day. I think it was like maybe three or four. 400 ISO or something like that. I can't remember, but I was shooting, you know, the yeah, app, app not, something. nothing too crazy, but just not nothing ideal. Nothing too crazy, but not ideal. And so, uh, uh, Joey was like, "Let me, uh, let me see your photo in the back of the camera." They're like, "No, you need to adjust this, this, and that." And then I shot it, and boom! I was like, "Wow, what a big difference!" So, um, just after that, he would, we would invite each other for shoots. Uh, uh, and it's uh, it all started from there, and now here yeah, we guys, are, it's, 2017. It's, it, like some people see that we're friends or that I'm friends with other photographers, and honestly, it just it's something that develops over time. And sometimes there's other kind of interactions that I've had before that it feels like it's gonna go somewhere stronger relationship, and it just doesn't. And there's nothing, no like, it's not a bad thing. It's just that you know sometimes other people are just more busy, mm -hmm. but or some people are just more open to helping and dedicating time to that. So that's the, that's the case that I want to say with Jeff and Eli and Roland. So that's why we're, we're good friends. Um, but yeah, I'm open to, to, to helping out anyone in the area as long as they're like, as long as they have good intentions. Yeah, and as long as you're passionate about it. Because yeah, uh, there's, so there's some people that just want to learn and then all of a sudden, boom, they, they're, they're, they're either, uh, later on, they're either talking about, about you or whatever and they, they're, their intention is to learn so they can, I guess, outsell you. Yeah, something. You know, your competition or whatever. I, you know, I get, I'm real, bu I'm real busy doing photo shoots, and of course, I, you know, it's part business and stuff. But I don't consider Joey, Eli, or Jeff my competition at all. I mean, we're, we're good friends. We're friends. And so, uh, but I don't consider them competition. I consider them friends and uh, you know associates or colleagues because we learn from each other. You know, yeah. uh, there's some maybe some style that he knows that uh, I like, and he'll teach me. And then there's some other things uh, that I have actually taught him. Lately, I've been doing a lot of wide angle stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen it on my on my Facebook or Instagram, but yeah, I've been learning to do that. And yeah, so like, the shot oh. behind us actually is a great shot. I'm gonna try to move our face completely so, away so we can so focus. you guys can see the picture. But that picture is something that Roland took. And it's a, he's been doing a lot of wide angle stuff and it's really nice. So I did want to show some of, some of his stuff, his wide angle work. So yeah. I don't even know if I'm focused or not. Yeah, but yeah, it. Hopefully it's focused, but this is something new that I learned. Uh, I, uh, I'm gonna throw out Christine Diaz. Hi Christine, if you're watching this. Uh, but uh, Christine, I did one of her, I went to one of her workshops and man, it's an eye opening thing. I learned a lot from her. And guys, I would, if you ever see her posting for workshops, I would suggest taking it. She's real open about yeah. She's everything. super. She's amazing. She's and super she's really nice. Open to helping. And he took or he, he took the yeah. One I, and I took one. You didn't uh, to take another. Uh, I, I took that one in Houston when she came down. I was all over it. I was like, "Whoa, Christine's gonna come." I didn't care how much it was gonna be because another thing that you guys need to do is invest in yourself. You know, education. Uh, we went to WPPI. Uh, went to some classes and everything. I learned some things there. That's where I met Christine, and that's, she told me about the workshop in Houston, but. You know, I mean, I spend money on going to workshops, uh, learning new techniques. Uh, in the beginning, when I was starting photography, I was all over the place. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I mean, I was like, should I do weddings? Nah. Should I do uh, portraits? I think I think yeah. a lot of photographers they have that that kind of like um, they're trying to figure out what to do, what to focus on, and we kind of just do everything, but. But you know, of course, after time you kind of focus on one thing that you, you're more passionate about. You yeah. Know? So I want to say that with, I want to say that I'm assuming for you it's portraits now. Yeah, no, my passion now is portrait photography. I mean, I I love just uh, you know it's when we experiment with the lights, with the sunsets, all that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, just the I mean portraits. I, I I just love doing portraits. I've been getting into doing bridals. Now I'm getting a lot of calls for people that are like, hey, I want can you do my bridal to look like that and of course i mean it's it's not cheap you know doing something like this because it takes it takes uh 
you know, you gotta learn, you gotta know where to position the light to yes. where it's gonna hit them it's right a, it's on. It's a lot of trial and error, guys. Now, guys, let me tell you something about this photo. It's all about the lighting, guys. That there is not much Photoshop done on this. I did remove some buildings in the back for this photo. Uh, I did adjust the the saturation a little bit and made the color colors pop a little bit. A little bit of dodge and burn on the dress just to make it pop. But that's all I did. Maybe 10, less than 10 minutes of post-processing on that photo. It's all about the lighting. I'm gonna, sh when we go through this, you'll see uh, some of the photos that are now 2016 and 2017 when I switched over from Alien Bees to the Flashpoint yeah. 8600 system. Man, the Flashpoint, way better. <laughs> it is awesome. And, and just uh, being able to shoot at high speed sync, you know, that's something that, uh, something exciting that I learned because I mean, I was alien bees and you can't get high speed sync without unless you're using filters. Remember when we were using, we were, there's a photo in here where Joey did a workshop uh, back in 20, shoot, 2015, he did a workshop. Yeah, the and I, beginning of 2015. 20, beginning, it was January 2015, we did a, okay. he did a workshop and uh, I was like, okay, we're, he was talking about what we're gonna do and all that, brought the model out, and we're showing how lighting works and all that, and he's like, let's go shoot. So yeah. I took out, <laughs> yeah. I, I took, I took, I had my, uh, at this time, I already had a 5D Mark IV, Mark II, sorry, Mark II, I had a 5D Mark II, and I had, I had just purchased the 70 to 200, the first, first model. Not the two, it was the first one. Oh, that? Yeah. Did you get the second one? Eventually? No, no, I didn't buy the second one eventually. I got another toy that I'm going to show you guys later. Uh, yeah. uh, what I bought when I re I sold the, that 70 to 200, and so I bought something else with that. But I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, uh, no, I went to this uh, workshop that Joey had, and we're like, okay, we're going to shoot with, uh, with uh, uh, what was it, Alien B, was it 600? 800? 800 Alien Bs with a... Uh, ND filter and I'm like I've never shot with filter so yeah. Uh, yeah that's what we had to do before like if you want to shoot wide open with a light that doesn't have high speed sync then the way to do that to get like the wide aperture with flash during the day kind of look is going to be ND filters and that's what we did before I got one for sale guys <laughs> <laughs> I bought it used it once and now it's sitting in a drawer kind of like well, a lot of stuff that you buy with for photography you know, some, <laughs> of the, some of the stuff doesn't you know you buy it at first and you're like Use it once and it just doesn't make sense anymore because also technology is so advanced now. But um, let's see what else. Oh, and then uh, after that workshop, I'm going to show you guys a photo here as well. After that workshop, uh, Joey had the, I guess Flashpoint had first come out with the, uh, what was it? The Flashpoint, you had, you're, you're always counting the clicks. Oh, uh, no, that wasn't Flashpoint. That was... Uh, that was another light by the name of that's Rove Light. Rove Light. The Rove Light. We used the Rove Light and the Rove Light 600B. Yeah, yeah. the Rove Light 600B, and uh, of course, there's no screen like there is yeah. now with the R2 system. Yeah, you had to guess pretty much. You had to hear. You had to go close to the light and hear the click, 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 and each two clicks was one stop. Every three clicks was. I want to say it was. A th Every three clicks was like one stop. Yeah, it was like one, two, one stop of light. One, two, two. two. yeah. yeah. And we had to do a lot of counting because, uh, because of, of course there was no screen that showed us the power output. Which yeah. was, I don't know. I talk about that now. <laughs> no, and that's when I was first introduced to high speed sync, and I'm like, shot it, and I was like, whoa, man, this is this is totally awesome. <laughs> I think I found my style. Yeah. So, uh, but still, I had to still edit, and that's a different type of look. So. Um, I was still barely learning uh, Photoshop. It took me two years to get no two. Oh, oh no, yeah, it took me two years to get to the style that I'm doing now, and lots of photo shoots, lots of photo shoots. Yeah, that's trying. You know, uh, back uh, uh, back in, uh, I'm gonna tell you how many photo shoots I've, we've done. Well, between me and Joey and Eli and Jeff, all three of us together in 27. Yeah, he did them. He did. And them. I, he had it. He wanted to count, I guess. Yeah, and so get this, guys. In 2017, we did 91 photo shoots. Of course, these are these are not all paid, but uh, yeah. you know we do a lot of TFP. But you know what? What I it, the passion that I have for photography, it's all about practicing, getting yourself out there. And uh, 
Get this. Oh, I just want to. I didn't see this, but I just wanted to say thank you to Noe for the fourteen ninety nine donation. I'm gonna assume it's for the pizza. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Noe. Thank you so much, Noe. Um, uh, let's see. Wait, what else? Oh yeah, it says right there, pizza on me. Oh, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Noe. Thanks, Noe. I still, I want to meet you. We don't live too far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what was I still? What were you talking, talking about? Talking about the one of the purchases that we did. They're oh, all paid. Yeah, yeah, they're not all paid, guys. I mean, you, you got to get yourself out there and practice, 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 practice. Without the practice, man, I, I it would have taken me a lot longer to, to uh, get to, you know, to get to where I'm at right now. Uh, and like I said, a lot of them are free. A lot of them are free. Some of yeah. them are like, hey, uh, hey, uh, I would reach out to my cousins. I have real good looking cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have reached out to my cousins and I've used her for three or four photo shoots to get started. And then uh, my friend's girlfriends or my friend's wives or their, or my friends, now being at this age, I'm not going to say how old I am, but <laughs> you know, uh, my friends that have teenage daughters all the way up to in their 20s. And so I have, I've invited them to come shoot. Um, uh, I've also uh, recently I've reached out to there's three modeling academies here in in town so uh, I was reaching out to them and to the girls mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them you know I, I haven't had a, out of maybe all these photo shoots 91 in 2017 2018 so far we've done 68 photo shoots Jeez. only once and I hope this doesn't change but only once I've been turned down for a shoot Hmm. Uh, but uh, that's a good ratio. That's a good ratio, but uh, you know, not to brag or anything like that. But I guess it's my approach because uh, you know, uh, okay, I'm gonna tell you how old I am. I'm 51 years old now, and so I know I look 35. But uh, you know, reaching out to models half my age and all that—I mean, it's, people view that as yeah, you kind of creepy sometimes. You, 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 know? you, you just have to be—I don't know—as professional as possible. Yeah, very professional. Yeah. Uh, what I've done in the past, and this is maybe something what you guys want to try, look through your Facebook friends and see, uh, you know, their siblings, uh, look through their photos. I know it's kind of, I'm not going to say stalkerish, but, uh, you know, it'll help you out. Look through their friends list and see if you, uh, look through their photos and see if they have anybody that's like modeling or all that. And then if they are, why don't you just send them a quick note saying, Hey, you know what? I'm a pro photographer. Uh, I'm trying to build a portfolio. Yeah, um, I, I want to encourage Ron to do YouTube videos, and I'm one of the I know one of the most questions that we get a lot is like, how do we find models? Yeah, don't so spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's honestly, actually, it's cool because when when I did a live stream uh, with Eli, the fir first one I did with this kind of pizza and portraits talk, um, uh, somebody who, in the comment section was asking us, or in the chat, was asking us how to find a, find models, and we we told them a little bit of advice. He called up an agency in his area, yeah. and then he ended up doing a photo shoot. So, yeah. like while we were doing the live video, so yeah. so keep that in mind, guys. Just just do a just reach out. It's better to yeah to ask and figure out. If yeah, you, and and if you get denied, hey, there's it's a yeah. num it's a numbers game. It's yes. a numbers game. You know, somebody eventually is gonna say yes. Just don't get uh, discouraged. You know, I mean, I uh, as you can see, I talk a lot, so I'm very. Uh, <laughs> I am very extroverted. I mean, I if I was introverted, Joey used to be this way. Yeah. Real shy when I first met him, and uh, uh, I was like, okay, guys, well, let's shoot or whatever. He's like, well, we don't have models. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something about this. So I'm the one that started reaching out to models and stuff, and then pretty soon, I mean, word got out that you know we're doing photo shoot, and then we post our photos, and we'd be like, wow, that's how the modeling agency contact actually contacted me because. The owner was like, hey, you've been shooting some of my models. And I was like, oh, shoot, I think she's going to get mad at me for not asking for permission. But she was like, you know what? You guys do excel excel excellent work. Why don't you come in for a meeting? So I went and met with her, and she was like, look, we have all these new girls coming in. And, uh, of course, we need to do test shoots and all that. And, of course, we're, I was all excited. I was like, I'll do it for free. No more free stuff. But... I was like, I'll do it for free just to get the experience. But we had a steady stream of models. I mean, we were booked. I was doing, well, all of us, me, Joey, and uh, Eli, sometimes Jeff, but we were doing maybe two to three shoots a week, every week. Yeah. That's like, how we got to we, we, 91 shoots. Yeah, we did a lot of shoots kind of to like take them on to like learn and try new things. 
yeah, so you, it just depends on your schedule. I know a lot of people out there have full-time jobs. Yeah, I have so, a full-time job, eight to yeah, five job. And it's honestly just, just all from the passion. If you guys, because I know a lot of people will have excuses, but you honestly have to cut through that. You have to figure out time to do these shoots, even if it's just an hour. Um, plan yeah. it, make sure it, looks, it goes well. And just make the time so you can learn. And if that's your passion, then you'll make time. Yeah, another thing is explain to the model what you want to do. Or if there's a concept or whatever. We usually don't have concepts. We just tell our models, hey, pick three nice outfits and uh, bring them with you. Uh, come dressed in one, bring them with you. And then uh, from there, we decide what next uh, we'll shoot to question. warm up. What? Somebody was asking how many edits you were providing with the agency. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, uh, I only provide, let's see, for each girl that I shoot, uh, when it was free, I was providing them, and I think I used to give them a lot of them, but uh, I would give them 10 edits, 10 f edited photos. I would actually, I use a, I use a program called Pixie Set. It's a catalog, what is it, a um, uh, system, what Pixie Set is It's a, like, it's a, um, an online gallery online delivery gallery. system, I guess that's the best way to, to yeah. talk about it. And and um, you were letting them choose, or you yeah, I would send them. I would send all the photos from the actual shoot, like as proofs. As just proofs. I have it has a so that's, proof. If thing for anybody on it. who doesn't know, proofs are basically just low resolution uh, files, uh, so that they can kind of see and see what see what photos they like and not. So I also would, unedited. Unedited photos, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would shoot maybe a hundred or two hundred photos. So I would send them all of them in that pixie set thing because it's controlled. And they can't download unless you unless you let them download. But I was like, nope, no downloading. So uh, I would tell them out of this, you can only pick ten. I'm doing five now, but we're still, you know, we're like, okay, you can pick ten. Ten I would edit, but man, when you're doing two to three shoots a week, what's up, uh, photo me Ike? <laughs> <laughs> two to three shoots a week. Whoa, man, I was starting to get behind. I'm actually yeah. behind right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind as well on. A couple of videos that I need to make, so I, I seriously want to make the time to make those videos for you guys because I have like maybe five photo shoots from f photos from those photo shoots that I haven't shown you guys at all. Like I haven't sent you any images, and and they're beautiful models and beautiful photos. So I want to work on those so I can show you guys. I kind of I kind of keep them like I don't show some of the photos until I'm actually like done making the video or around the time that I'm making the yeah. video. So yeah, um, real quick. Let's go ahead and talk about, uh, let's go ahead and talk about, um, let's see, the, go ahead, let's talk about the Magmod system. Okay. Because I do want to talk about the Magmod system because Roland actually uses the Magmod system. I, okay, I want to say with the Magmod system, they're great products and they're perfect for portraits. I would say for events more so than portraits, but, yeah. but for, for my specific style, I like soft light. So I, I kind of, I have. I have the Magmod system, but I just didn't use to use them because they're not the softest out there. No, it's not. And so, uh, I mean, it does throw kind of a harsh, that you get the harsh shadows and stuff like that, but yeah. it's a new style that I'm starting to like. You know yeah. what I mean? I would say with the hard, hard, like, because the Magmod system, the way that they're designed to be more portable and stuff and good for events, when it comes to portrait work, um, unless you're shooting ride, like for me, my, my style is more like zoomed in on the subject so when that when that harsher lighting is there, um, it can kind of um, be not as appealing as if like I'm just a huge fan of soft light. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. If you guys are familiar from work, you would know that. Uh, so what, 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 the reason why I want to talk about Magmods in today in today's video is because they just released or they just announced a couple of new products. I want to say last week. Like, uh, yeah, it was last week. Mag about. Yeah, like about a week ago. Today's Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say a week ago. They announced some new products, and oh my gosh, I'm excited for them. I'm super excited for them. You already pre-ordered? I pre-ordered the top tier one, which was, and okay, the reason why I'm excited is because they have new, a new mag mod softbox. It's called the mag box that's designed to work with the mag mod system. And I'm a f fan of soft light, so finally now the mag mod system <laughs> has a, has modifiers that are going to be designed for softer light. Right. Um, and, and yeah. And, and they also I'm seem excited. very portable because it's like, it comes in the case where it's all, you can even put your 8200s in there. You know, it's pretty cor portable. You carry all your lighting equipment and one on your back, like a backpack, which I like. I mean, I like that. Uh, uh, let's see. 
Yeah, I just started using. I was introduced through the Magmod system through Christine Diaz at WPPI. Yeah, quick shout out to Christine Diaz. If you guys are not familiar with her work, it's, she's definitely worth looking up. Her name is Christine Diaz. Uh, type yeah. that the way it's usually spelled. Yeah, and you can find her on Facebook. She's, uh, like I said, she's the one that's been teaching me this stuff. But uh, yeah, she's great for She introduced me to that Magmod, or well, we at WPPI when we went, she introduced it there. But then when I went to the workshop, I actually got to, my hands on it. I actually got to use it, and I'm like, whoa, I'm used to carrying, I'm used to lugging a lot of equipment, stands, it was heavy stands, uh, because I use all uh, C stands. So uh, lugging around the stands and this big five inch, five inch, five foot <laughs> Octobox that Joe introduced me to. I mean, I use the Octobox, I use the, I use the heck out of that Octobox, the five footer. But uh, when I went with Christine, I was like, we're not gonna use any soft boxes. She's like, oh, no way, no sir. Uh, we're gonna, you know, I'm a Magmod ambassador. We're only gonna use Magmods. And I'm like, whoa. So it totally blew me away on, uh, you know, using the Magmod system and just getting the quality of photos that I was getting. I'm gonna show you a couple photos here that I did with a Magmod. Is there a way we can? Um, let me see. Because right now what's going to happen is that I'm, I wanted to show some of the photos of, uh, that Rowan's taken before. Uh, and the way that I have to do that is because I only have one monitor on me, I'm going to have to like show the screen on my computer. So if you, so I'm just saying that ahead of time because... In case we have a glitch or in something. In case you guys this are is, like, what's this is going first on? Time. You know, what happened to the live stream? That's, that's why. That's yeah, <laughs> and, and he, uh, this is a... Uh, I, I know the other two uh, sessions you had, your YouTube videos with... A, Eli and with uh, with Jeff, you know, it was just you guys talking and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I want to, you know, yeah. we want to be able to show. Stuff yeah, I wanted on. to sh start showing you guys some images and stuff. Hopefully, when I show you guys some of the images, they're not too. Hopefully, the quality is not the same as what you're seeing right now, like with um, with right. us talking, which so, is like 480p. Some people have said. Yeah. Um, hopefully, they show up better. So but, this is just a test. Yeah. A test. We're on a test run. Test test run right now. Yeah, and this will be like how how did I do the photo? Uh, okay, so, okay, okay, so somebody's saying that the the quality is going to be low. Uh, when showing the photos. Okay. So I don't know if you want to show them still. Uh, let's try. Let's show one and let's see if uh, if, if the quality. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys one. Which one did you want me to show? Uh, let's do the one I did with the magma. The magma. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys one of the photos. Hopefully it's not too bad. If it is, then I'll go ahead and leave uh, a link in the description area. Actually, I think I already did uh, leave a link to Roland's Instagram in the description area. Yeah, go so to my Instagram. You guys can check some of his photos there. He does a lot of. He he's a he has a good range of wide photos and also telephoto he has the freaking roland has a 200 millimeter f 2.0 lens by canon this thing costs one arm and one leg so if you guys are, are wondering <laughs> if you want if you want to buy it just 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 try to figure out which arm and leg you want to sell which one's more important to you i use my right arm for my pictures all the time so i would never <laughs> actually guys i saved two years to get this baby right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, two years of uh, doing photo shoots and uh, just saving my money. Uh, on my website, rolandsanchez.com. If you go to my, I haven't posted any photos in there using, because I just recently upgraded from the 5D Mark II to the 5D Mark IV. In there, you'll see all my photos that were done with the 5D Mark II. Yeah, he had the 5D Mark II for a while. Did You didn't have the Mark III, right? No, never did the Mark III. I had the- from two to I went from two to four, but I was using my 135 with a Mark II. So all those photos you see on there are done with my Mark II, 135, and my 24 to 70. Jeez. So, and, and I've been told, I mean, people are like, whoa, I'm, I'm impressed with, you were shooting that with a Mark II? I was like, yeah, I had the Mark II since it first came out up until last year when I got the Mark IV. <laughs> so and using this on the Mark II and the Mark IV, whoa, totally, it just blew my mind. Because uh, the photos are just sharper. And somebody and, just followed you. Oh yeah, thank you, Joseph. Uh, thanks, you Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> uh, um, thanks, Joseph. Somebody saying that they, why you haven't switched to Sony yet. He has a Sony <laughs> A6500. So. Guys, it <laughs> is a big learning curve. I can even Eli. We talked about this once. Uh, it's a big learning curve. I mean, I would have to you know really take time to learn that one and. It, it's just a hard, to me it's a hard system to learn, and, uh, but I do have, I, when these guys, when Joey was switching over to Sony, and all, I was like, hey Sony, 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 so you know what, I went, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go buy the A6500, I bought the A6500, uh, started using it, and I'm like, I like the auto, 
The I autofocus. The I autofocus. I autofocus. Is it is amazing, but I was amazing. Like, I was like, uh, I was always. I would take both cameras to shoot, and I would start out with my A6500, and after about maybe about ten shots, it would go back in the bag. I'd take out my Mark II because I was so comfortable with it. Yeah, it just honestly, it's. I I would say that the learning curve is small, but I'm a, I I'm also like a kind of a quick adapter to learning things. I try like I was more like curious and interested when it comes to Sony, so that's why I was like, whoa, what's going on? I want to learn this as soon as possible. But there is going to be that learning curve, just like with anything else. There's going to be a learning curve, so just keep that in mind. I know some people have been turned off when they when like they shoot Canon and then they get to so the Sony and they're like, whoa, I don't like this. I'm going to switch back. Honestly, if you just stick with it, you know, I want to say the pros are going to be like countless. There's so many pros and the cons are very little. I can't even, yeah. I can't think of many, honestly. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter what camera you use. Yeah. If you know how, matter. you know, it doesn't matter what camera you use. I mean, it, it's, it's another tool in your bag. You know, if you master it and know how to use it so very well, you know, it, it doesn't matter. What matters is how much it costs. <laughs> We're live. Very expensive. I'm, I'm doing an Instagram story so you guys can see. I'm live. But uh, I'm live. you know, I mean, I've been Canon, and uh, uh, something new comes up. I mean, who knows? I mean, <laughs> Sony came out with yeah. Sony comes up with a camera every six months. Yeah. And of course, Joey has to. He has every single one. No, I, I don't. I don't. 2015. I have probably. a7R3, a7R3, <laughs> a7 III, a7R2. A7 how many of them? A65, a6000. Just six <laughs> Sony cameras. Six oh Sony's. So I can barely afford. I'm still paying on my Mark IV. <laughs> I'm this, just dead too, guys. Okay? This no. This was paid cash. So, but you know what, guys? I got a really good deal on this lens. Brand new, through Adorama, and uh, I mean, I got a really good deal. Oh, I was gonna say for those of you that have this lens, I don't know if y'all know this, but this is actually uh, what I've been told in the past. Oh, tell, tell them how. What I've been told. Tell them how expensive this is. Just this. If you lose this. This is, I believe, I've, I've been told that this is carbon fiber. So uh, if you How lose this, how much is it, Roland? Seven hundred bucks if you lose it. Seven hundred. So. This is this <laughs> is an explore explore TTL right here. This is this right here. Now they don't make a, they don't make a UV <laughs> filter. Oh they don't make a UV filter for this to cover it for the glass. So you got to be real careful, you know, when handling it with fingerprints and, or even. I took this to a beach shoot a couple weeks ago. And of okay, course, so. with the wind blowing, you gotta, you know, the sand and stuff. So you gotta be real careful with this, since there's no actually UV filter that covers it. Another thing, can I see that? Got the, oh, the lens. Yeah. I'm here putting it on the pizza box. The pizza anything. box. No, but, uh, okay. Putting it to get put for storage. You just flip it over, and then what I like is got this really neat Canon cover. You know, made out of uh, I guess it's. Nylon or something, but we could talk about the, this Canon 200 for for years. Oh yeah, it's we a, can. It's crazy. That's my baby. I'm gonna put it away because I think you guys are eyeing it, and you guys uh, give it ojo. <laughs> you're gonna give it what's called us Mexicans call ojo, and uh, it's bad juju. <laughs> so we don't want that. Um, Joey eventually will be doing a review, not a review, but kind of like a. On your A7 III with uh, oh with yeah, Canon. it sucks because I, I was gonna release a video showing the autofocus speeds of different Sony cameras on different or different Canon lenses on the Sony cameras, but then it got um I don't know I accidentally formatted it or <laughs> not me maybe somebody else, but not me. We, you had that video, but yeah. it accidentally got deleted. Or yeah, so I do want to make that I still want to make that video guys for you guys because he has um different Sony uh Canon Canon lenses, so I want to show you guys that. Um, and also because I think that there's the some of the some of the videos that I've seen that test the autofocus speeds with the Canon lenses on the Sony system, I think it could be a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that I've seen a lot is that people just focus in the center. And one of the biggest things that I've experienced when I adapt Canon lenses to to the Sony system is that I around the edges of the screen is where it starts to like go away. Like in the center, like there's like a center area, it's good. But then when you start to go to the edges, it gets a little bit weird, like it starts to lose focus. And that's where I want to highlight like more so with the Canon lenses, like where it starts to drop off and if it's got, that's going to be important to you. So different things like that. Um, 
Let's see. Ron's eating his pizza keto style. That means he's just eating the toppings. I'm just eating the toppings. Yeah. Ashley, and this is big, uh, you know, I'm following your diet. My girlfriend just, is on the keto diet. So I'm on the keto diet right now. So let, let's and talk I'm about just the toppings. Don't eat the, don't eat the pizza roll and you're on keto. <laughs> <laughs> it's keto friendly, Eli. <laughs> let's see. Um, I have poor man's keto. Let's see. What are we talking about? So I I did touch up on the magma system. I do want to revisit that in a second. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about. The AD, I want to talk about the AD 400 Pro for oh, a second yeah. as well because that's something that uh, I'm, I love the Godox products. I honestly do. You guys know that if you know my work at all. Um, for those of you who don't know, Godox is the same thing as Flashpoint. So it's just that Adorama mm -hmm. got the Godox lights and they rebranded them as their own, as the Flashpoint products. I think uh, so, there's so. another company that's also doing it. Oh, uh, it's Flashpoint, Godox. Well, those are the two. Wasn't Cheeto doing it at one time? Yeah, but I'm just like, because I deal yeah. with like the Flashpoint name and the yeah. Godox name. Yeah. But Godox, I'm going to go by the Godox names right now. So if you guys are curious, like if I'm mentioning the, the same light, thing as Flashpoint. Yeah, um, the Godox AD600 is the same thing as the Flashpoint Explore. Uh -huh. The Godox AD200, same thing as the Flashpoint Evolve. Mm -hmm. And just the, the, the lights, I'll just call them by the, the speed lights, I'll call them by the speed light name by Adorama. Because like, yeah. If you guys have any questions about the Godox lights, I'm, I'm free to answer them right now because... I like them. I like them a lot. I'm going to dedicate a lot of videos talking about the Godox lights because they're honestly the best lights out there in my opinion. Uh, yeah. What's going on? Let's uh, scroll up a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to scroll up, a, scroll up a little bit. See they're, going, they're going really fast. Yeah. Um, um, talking about the no, I mean, E9. Yeah, oh, pizza with a fork. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Um, let me see some questions. Oh, well, known as a Pika. Oh, there's a Pika. Oh, under. yeah. Honestly, like when it comes uh, F18, I don't know what your name is for real, but there's a lot of different names for the Godox lights depending on where you live. Um, back when the the Evolve, the that back when the Explore 600 came out, to my knowledge, there was about nine different names for the light, depending on where you live, like in South Africa, the UK, New Zealand, it, like all these other different areas, they they um, they got the light, but they just rebranded it as their own. So I'm just gonna go by the Godox names if I can. Yeah. So. Let me see. Let's see. Pika buffer. Oh no, they're just talking about like some of the speeds of the A9. Eighty four. Um, no wait. Yeah. Hey amigos, are you are you all, are y'all ever used an eighty four octa an eighty four? Dang dude, that's probably like. <laughs> I don't know. Jeez, I want to. I would love that, but I would I would only do it on a on a day that's not windy. Yeah, no, and that's like a uh, super soft. We would have to use that indoors. I mean, the thing is huge. I, you know what? I think I've seen Joe Grimes use that when he does his motorcycle. When he shoots motorcycles, he has that huge. Mm. Soft, I don't know which one it is, but I think he uses that size octa either an octa box or a square uh, rectangular box. But I've seen him use it when he shoots motorcycles. And Joseph, I um. You said that the 8400 will have a different mount system. I want to say from that article that I linked up, I thought that it showed the Bowen. Like, honestly, if the 8400 Pro does not have Bowen's mount, that's going to be a big deal in, in a negative way because Bowen's mount is like awesome. So I want to say that that it's going to have the Bowen's mount. I could be wrong, of course. Maybe they could have diff two different options for the for Bowen's mount. Maybe one Bowen's mount, one's not. Because mm -hmm. um, they do have their own mount. I believe Godox has their own. Godox mount, so it needs to have Boeing's mount. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna be a a big negative. It's gonna be a big con for that light. So oh, F eighteen is fur. Hey fur, how you doing, brother? Oh fur. <laughs> F H E R. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Go back a little bit. Fur. Uh, let me see. Let's go down a little bit. Talking about. Uh, do I have the Explore six hundred Pro? Yeah, I actually oh, yeah. do. It's over here. I have it, but it's over there. Yeah, he does. He has all the experience. If I had somebody in here like helping me out, then I would be like, "Hey, can you give me that?" I don't. I was just me and all of you. But um, I'm the cat. Where are you at? Yeah, <laughs> I did one video with the Explorer 600 Pro, so you guys can check that out if you want to. But um. Oh yeah, and Flashpoints do have an excellent warranty. You know, yeah, I, they I, do. I I think I was, yeah, I think I was burning my my flash bulb on top of my. Uh, 600 my explorer it was starting to go gray or black towards the towards the pins and so i just called adorama and i'm like hey uh i i didn't even send him a picture i just called him and like hey no i actually sent him an email i was like hey this is what's happening on my light it's starting to go black or dark or like a charcoal like burned out it looks like it was burning out 
And so they're like, okay, where well, do you want us to ship a new one? And they shipped me a new one, and now I have two. Yeah, it's crazy. Wait, what? Well, I have, still have the old one that I'm using because oh. it still works perfectly. Oh, okay. But I have a brand new one that's on backup. Come get them, Adorama. Come get them. <laughs> don't shh. Don't tell Adorama. <laughs> but um, <laughs> somebody asked, working, where can... Somebody asked another question. Eight, where can we oh. find phone? What is that? Michael? Michael Maestro Pierce. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much. We're going to have another drink at WPPI coming up. <laughs> If you if you go to that, let me see. Um, he doesn't even drink, so I'll drink it. The, <laughs> <laughs> Eli, you're with me on this one. Let me see. Somebody asked a question. Oh, somebody asked me if I use the Godox continuous LEDs that look like the 8600. I want to say those, those are the Godox SL 200, 400. I want to say that that's the naming system for them. I I have it. I don't have those yet. I've been a big fan of the Aperture continuous LED lights. So I've been using them for a while. That's actually what's lighting us right now. Mm -hmm. I have the Aperture 120D with the with what they call the light dome with uh, modifier, which is the 36 inch that they have. They're coming up with a couple new products as well, so I'm really excited about those coming out. But yeah, I've been using the Aperture lights. But um, honestly, I, I have a couple of other um, LEDs from other companies that I want to review as well. Uh, so yeah, actually. Um, let me go ahead and get this out. But Godox actually came up with their own uh, LED oh, stick uh, that they. Uh, I have that to move my pizza. Out. I think it's almost out. I think it is out already. But let me just go ahead and show yeah. you guys while Roland talks Chow about. Down my pizza keto. Let's keto see. pizza. Let's okay, see let's see what. what I'll go ahead and see what's up. Let's see. Um, I'm more, oh, um, go down a little bit. Oh, uh, Twan. Twan? Twan LB02. Oh, thank you. Thank we. You. Uh, uh, we just do what we do, man. It's something that's passionate. We have a passion for photography, and so, as you can see, I, I talk a lot, so it, it, you can feel that energy off of me. Uh, also, when I do photo shoots, I'm real, uh, and Eli can attest to this, but uh, when I do photo shoots, I'm actually, models actually are like, wow, that was a fun photo shoot, you know, that I had with you guys. I've never experienced anything like this with some other photographers, but, but you know, uh, I'm the type that, Keeps on talking. That's what you gotta do when you shoot with models. You gotta uh, dialogue. Bring some music, Eli. We gotta bring some music, uh, and it's, it, it it makes it a lot of fun. Oh, here's the light that Joy was talking about. Yeah, this so. is the the LC500. They're calling it the Godox LC500. That's this light right here. Um, what's cool about this one is that it has, it's very powerful, and it has a daylight on one side, and it has a uh, it has tungsten on the other side. So yeah, but I have them at different power levels. Holy crap, this is bright. I believe I have I have one side of it at ten percent, the other side is at another at a hundred percent. So yeah, it's like the ice light, but yeah, not the not the price. So yeah, so these are these two um, things. It has this barn door that you can use with it. So and Ashley just walked Ashley, in, Ashley, but I'm you can't see her yet. <laughs> keto, hey, I'm doing keto. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside, but I did want to show you because I I'm actually really happy and excited about this light. Um, I want to do a photo shoot very soon, but um, so I can check. Now we have an assistant. Oh yeah, now I have an assistant that I can't. Oh, yeah, I heard you. you We're gonna do the six. It, right? the no, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. She's gonna show me that. She's gonna get to grab the Explorer 600 Pro. Can you put this back up there? Oh, um, let's see. Let's see if I miss any questions. Oh yeah, you like yes, sir. Music equals Instagram bangers, bombers, bombers, bangers. The, okay, let's see. When, <laughs> when are we? When are we coming to Houston? I actually. That's good that you asked that because I did want to go to to had to that. Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, watch out for the camera. Oh. I wanted to go to Dallas. No, I'm sorry. Mm. I want to go to Dallas, Houston, Austin. and San Antonio, but San Antonio first. Oh yeah, I was like, I know there's another. We big, can do. Big we can city. do. Remember, I talked to you about doing one in Austin because I do have family there. We could use her. Yeah, Roland no. has a great has a has a has a family member that has a great location, really Beautiful spacious house. Uh, so probably yeah. about a uh, ten thousand square foot home with. Uh, oh my God. Four acres, yards with a pool, uh, waterfalls, and everything. We could actually do, um, uh, you know, meet there in the theater room, have a session, and everything. Then we can go outdoors and shoot, and that'll be awesome. So, and it's in Austin, so you guys st stand by once he starts listing his where he's gonna do his workshops and stuff. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm here. When's the wedding? When's the <laughs> <laughs> Francisco. Oh, see no ring on his Donate for the wedding, guys, so you can get fun. No ring on we can finger. fund that to the to the wedding. So, Actually, no, here. That's kidding. where I was pointing, guys. So, but um, let's see. We talked about the eighty four hundred Pro for a little bit. I did want to go back to the eight uh, to the magma the magma system and the products that they're coming out with because I want to know 
if you guys are, are in, any, in any way excited about them, I'm really excited because to me, in my opinion, I know there's there's people that say it's a little too expensive, but if if that's your thought process, then I want to say that you you either are not as, passionate. No, 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 no. Not that. It's just that they're the Magmon system are designed for speed, mm -hmm. and the price is going to be a, a second thought. If if it can save you a couple of seconds. Yes. When, you do, when you're shooting an event or something, then it's going to be or definitely worth the price. Even the weight guys, because I mean, I carry all this hardware with me. You like to test it, but we carry all this hardware with us and it's just heavy, heavy. We use those little wagons yeah. that we've been using to pull all our stuff on there. And oh, I did a beat shoot recently by myself, had to carry all this equipment. And man, it was hard lugging that equipment through the sand. And I was like, the mo I would look at the models. I was like, can you guys help me? I'm like, no, we don't <laughs> want to ruin our nails. I was like, oh, so I had to... Drag, lug all that stuff across the sand, sand dunes. But uh, the Magmod. Wait, I want to quick answer a question that somebody oh, had yeah, real quick. Yeah. With the LC500, the Godox light I just brought that looked like a lightsaber, somebody mentioned if that's a good light for like a, a, a strip lighting. That's exactly why I think that it'd be perfect for, for that light. That's why I, I, why I intend to use it and how I, how I intend to use it. So yeah, it's like perfect for like having that strip of light. Hey guys, has the, has the video quality gotten better? Because I wanted to show some photos that I did with the Magma system. Yeah, so I, don't, I don't know why can it's you, at Can this you level. post and see if the video's gotten better? Because I don't know why it's doing this. Yeah, um, I, I want to say that it's going to stay at this quality and then maybe after the video is uploaded, it'll change. No, no, no. So, um, but again, guys, you can check out Roland's work at, um, it, I have a link in the description. It's Instagram.com slash Sanchez underscore Roland. And follow like, me. Tell yeah. your friends. So, <laughs> let it be known. Get me to two thousand followers, please. I'm just I'm not like this guy, twenty five thousand. I have but, twenty one thousand seven hundred. Okay, yeah, seven. there you go. I have like twelve hundred. My mom was the first one to follow me. Oh my mom didn't have a computer. Okay, somebody's saying that four hundred and eighty P is gonna be the limit for this video. Mm. Um maybe uh on the next live stream that I do, which is gonna be next week, I wanna do this week weekly. Yeah. Um maybe I can figure out a way that it's gonna be a, a bit higher resolution. Our internet's not too slow. It's yeah. pretty good speeds. So maybe mm. next time if uh Joey invites me to do another oh. video, I can show you guys some sample photos that I do with a Magma system. It says the stream light the stream the stream health is okay. It said good for a second, and now it's back to being like orange. So oh, okay. don't know what the difference is. But um, okay, so yeah, I want to talk about the mag mag mod systems again because again, I do want to keep this on to on topic a bit. Um, we talked about Roland how he started. I want to do re revisit that in a second. But the mag mod system, the reason why I'm excited it again is because I I love soft light and you know when you have a bigger modifier, you're gonna be able to get softer light. Because when it comes to soft light, um, it's going to be two main things are going to be uh, really huge. It's the fusion and the size of the light. So mm -hmm. if you have a bigger modifier, close, um, then it's going to be softer. Light. If you had a small like light like that's the size, like if you had something that was the size of your fist at this distance, then it's going to be harsher than if you had something that was like three feet or two feet at the same distance. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just the way that it works, guys. So. I love soft light, so I'm excited about these new modifiers because they open really quick. And the w another thing that I'm excited about is because the way that they're going to be able to to put gels on them, they have they're going to have a uh, a zipper on the side, and you're going to be able to put your hand in there, pop a gel in oh, there, yeah. like That's real fine. easy. No no duct tape, no tape or anything. And when it comes to gelling, when using gels, the main reason why I never really do that is because I hate the whole. I don't want to be like, okay, hold on, get the tape and put it on there. Or do it beforehand, or wrap the 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 gel around the bulb, um, and it's just something that's just like I'm all about. Can we just shoot already? So I just want to do yeah. that. So I'm excited for the Magmod system, the Magmod, the Mag box because of that new gel system. They yeah, have. And, and it's really easy to set up. I yeah. mean, it's all magnetized and stuff. Because I mean, right now setting up the five foot, putting it on, and then adjusting it with a Magmod system. Maybe the quality is better, but you it's just, like lagging. Yeah, you just pop it in and. Man, it's just quick. I'm hoping to, uh, I'm gonna go to a workshop in Atlanta in a few days uh, with Ramiro Cervantes. You guys need to check out his work too. He uh, is actually another guy that does this type of work, but his work is awesome. You might wanna look him up on Facebook, because Ramiro Cervantes, C-E-R-Bantes. Um, somebody asked about the, the Magmod system when they're gonna release the products. 
Well, the way that they wanted to kind of get this funded and make it in mass production is that they did a Kickstarter. And Kickstarter works in that you get, you know, you, you put it out there and if you're interested, you, you pledge it. And, then, and it works for everybody in the sense that um, you, you purchase, you make the, the pledge to, to, so you can get your product. It's kind of like buying it, but there's always going to be that wait time. And the products are going to be released, I believe, in January 2019. So that's still a little bit of way. You know, I should, I should be pizza. eating pizza, man. <laughs> uh, twin head on 8200s with a mag box. I think it would still work, no? Uh, for, I have a twin head unit for my 8200s, but the mag box would still be slick. Would sick. Still be sick, my yeah. bad. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, ex I'm excited about like any products that has to do with photography. I love... I love technology and I honestly believe with the new MagMod system, the MagMod modifiers, um, they're, they're really coming out with some stuff that's, that's pretty cool and hasn't been done before. They have a, a diffuser that's gonna be work, that's gonna be awesome in two things. Um, usually when you diffuse the light, you, you soften it, but it also cuts down the light a little bit. Mm -hmm. And with the, they have something called the Focus Diffuser and that's gonna be good in, in that you're gonna it's basically gonna work like a grid. It's gonna direct the light um, a little bit more focus. It's gonna focus the light just like a grid would, but with grids, and this is something that I didn't know for the longest time, with grids, you're focusing the light, but you're also cutting down the light a little bit. And I didn't even know that. Yeah. So with that focus diffuser, it's gonna focus the light, but you won't, you don't, you won't experience any of that, uh, any of that light loss. So I'm excited for that. The gel system, and honestly, the it just looks like it's gonna be fun to work with and i'm i'm all about having fun with my photography so and it's gonna be something that's gonna make me have fun with photography yeah and experiment. you know what i was experimenting with the gels the other day and uh it's uh learn it's a learning thing so you gotta know what temperature you need you're gonna change your kelvin on your computer and i was i was going all the way up to ten thousand kelvin using blue filters, blue gels, and it was interesting what I was getting. So let's see, what other questions do we have here? So may I ask what about, about the cheetah stand modifier? Oh wait, what? The mag mod with a mag sphere on speed light. Uh, I think that was a Nix, Joseph. But, Joseph, but what, what about that setup? Like for, what's your question about it? Like do you use it or? Yeah, uh, I personally wouldn't, I, because I like to shoot outdoors and mainly our shoots start like around six central time, which the sun is still way high. I don't use speed lights at all with a mag system. Uh, I do use the uh, Evolve, which is the 8200, and at full power, and it works really well for now. Uh, I did try sticking it on my 600, on my Explore 600, but I couldn't get it to fit correctly. So, dude, when it's that idea, <laughs> I think I've seen somebody do that before. Hello, my bad guys from Pizza. Um, somebody's asking about um, the Cheetah Sand products. The cheetah stand, when it comes to cheetah stand, I think they're focusing now on modifiers. So they have a lot of great modifiers. I do have some and do plan to do reviews on them. But um, from my my little bit of first impressions with, with, with getting them so far, they're built, they're built really solid and I really like them. So I, I do want to make videos showing you guys you know, the build quality and the light quality as well. So if you guys have any questions about those modifiers, mm -hmm. let me know so I can make the tests a little bit more something that you'd be really interested yeah. in, in like getting your questions answered. All right, Amir wants to see a Magmod shot. A Magmod you shot. You want to try to show it to see go, if you can show it? I, I don't. Okay, it's uh, not Amir, go to my, uh, go to Roland's my Instagram. Instagram, Sanchez underscore Roland. Yeah, it's and in the description be, area. There'll be a photo of a girl with a, a <sighs> brightly colored blouse looking away and I shot that with a Magmod. There's another one that I shot with a uh, little girl with uh, in the sunflower field. With a, she had a flower crown on. That's another one I did with a magmod, and uh, it's I'm getting the hang of it, and I'm pretty much I'm liking the system. So maybe I'll be the next magmod ambassador. <laughs> we'll see. Magmod ambassador. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really um, interested in the company as well. If I did more um, events or weddings, then I definitely would be using the magmod system. Yeah. Unfortunately. It's not, well, it's not unfortunate, but I, I've devoted a lot of my time to just doing portraits because I was just more interested in that. And yeah. you definitely have a lot of more, um, you have to do a lot more commitment when it comes to weddings. And I just was not interested in, in, 
and doing that commitment, yeah. I can be a little bit more flexible. I've done a few weddings, guys, and I mean, it's not for everybody. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do one anymore. Unless, if I throw out a price tag now, $5,000, and they'll say yes, then I'll do it. But right now, uh, I, I enjoy doing portrait photography. Uh, I enjoy doing the bridles, but the actual event itself, it is pretty exhausting. So uh, I, I can't see myself doing that every weekend. Yeah, I know? mean, it's something that you definitely have to have a lot of uh, passion for when it comes to wedding photography. Uh, I just I just am more passionate when it comes to portraits. Yeah. So that's why I, I dedicate a lot of time to portrait photography. Um, let's see. I think we already talked about the, the Magmod system. We talked about the uh 200 millimeter <laughs> the, the 200 millimeter the 80 the 8400 pro we touched on that if you guys i wanted to dedicate this last 10 minutes or so to answering your guys's questions so if you guys have any questions at all whatsoever um use the hashtag q a that's the that way we'll we'll see it better uh, more clear we don't have to like search for the questions amir yeah use the hashtag q a <laughs> and then ask your questions um, more than likely, if you guys are wondering or not whether to ask the question, if you think it's a dumb question or not, definitely don't go ahead, you know, don't feel like that. More than likely, there's going to be other people that are watching this that have the same question. So go ahead and ask those questions. Uh, uh, Nick, Joseph, uh, where are you at? Because you're shooting that 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon outdoors with a speed light. Uh, 4 or 5 for us here in, in South Texas, man, it's about 100 degrees and the sun dying. is dying. You can see I'm off tan now from doing all these photos. <laughs> yeah. But uh, man, it, it, it the sun can beat you bad down here. So um, yeah, I was telling the model that I shot with at my photo walk this past weekend. I, if you guys were in New York, you guys missed out on a great oh, two works. photo walks. I'm gonna make a video on that very very soon, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but I did a photo walk and it was super hot there. I thought I thought New York was gonna be New a York? lot more fresh. Uh, but like but it was it was like <laughs> Texas, but not in the summer. Without the without the Yeah, it was hot. <laughs> so, so, it kinda of reminds me of that movie Batman where uh, what's his name? Where it has his half of his face is melted. Uh, two face. It, two face. Yeah. <laughs> be uh, driving and your face is melted on the side and the side you're on. Got a yeah. question. Oh wait, well, actually I wanna answer Nick's question. Okay. That you're asking what's the best time of day to shoot with a speed light? I've heard four or five PM. I would ask who asked that who who answered that because yeah. it's entirely dependent on the look that you're going after and the, and the light that you're working in. If it was a very cloudy day, you can do a lot with oh, the yeah. speed light. I do have a couple of videos. Uh, I do have one. I, it's a dedicated video of using a speed light. This is when I shot Canon. Um, and I shot with a speed light on a cloudy day. And I wanted to emphasize that because I, because it was a cloudy day, I was able to do a lot. If it was a sunny, bright day, I would not have been able to get the shots. Some of the shots that I took. So, yeah. Um, and I did a couple of other videos. I want to say like... Two, at least two more of the videos using the speed light. And that's entirely dependent on the look that you want and the light that you're working in. If you're working in a very, very bright day and you have a speed light, you can use it bare. You can use the power bare. But if you want to use like a softbox, which is going to cut down the power a bit, you're going to want to, you're going to want to use, a, use it in shade. So, so that where the, the sun is not going to be too strong and you're going to have to compete with it. Um, okay, Q&A. Any news on any new heads for the 8200? I kind of wish I can repurpose it as a continuous LED. I've seen ones like that before. If you if you want to use the 8200 as a continuous LED, what I would advise you to do is get the the dual head attachment. Godox calls it the ADB2. Flashpoint calls it the the dual head attachment. I think. This is Flashpoint. On. Um, but it has LEDs on there, and they're pretty really bright. So if you wanted to use that, yeah, and some of these I've seen uh, some of these eighty two hundreds they have the the freshnel for now head, Fresnel yeah, head it's like that, a speed light shaped head, and it ha it is some yeah. of them have the they go to the eighty two hundred when it has the Fresnel head, the speed light shaped head, it has a modeling lamp, but it's kind of dim. When you get that dual head attachment for the Evolve two hundreds to com to to combine two of them, right, um, it's gonna have a way brighter LED, and then it's also gonna have Bowen's mount. So that you, if you use Bowen's mount, which I highly recommend you do, then um, then you'll be able to use your Bowen's mount modifiers with with that attachment. So it's really cool. It's like a two in one. And then eventually, if you want another AD two hundred, you can combine it with that attachment and get a stronger light, stronger stronger single source of light. DT, can you speed light with high speed sync? Um, you can use a speed light with high speed sync. Yeah, you you can. Uh, I the videos that I've had where I use um, a speed light, I have used them with high speed sync. 
So it's, it's entirely dependent on the one that you have though. So not all speed lights have high speed sync. Another Q&A right there. John? What? John? John. Oh. Or Jan. Jan. John Moscoso. Where do you see mirrorless in the next year? Any insights? I don't have any insights. Like I don't have any secret information, but if I had to... I think Canon's pointing if, something out. If, you, if I had to give like my expertise on anything, then I, I'm, I'm excited to see what Nikon and Canon um, announce or come out with yeah. um, for two reasons. Nikon and Canon both need to have something that's just amazing and groundbreaking. Otherwise, if it just matches the Sony system, and any like if it just matches them I can see that there's gonna be a good crowd that's gonna go for that and because they're they're already invested in, in the, the lenses but one thing that Canon in my opinion needs to do what they need to have is they need to use the Canon EF mount system because adapting lenses is not going to be good it's not going to be it's always going to be optimal to use a native mount for the whatever camera you're using so it needs to have Canon EF mount and the technology in doing that is probably like if they do it, if they achieve it, then that's gonna be awesome. If they're gonna come up with a new lens system, or or, or having to adapt lenses, then that's gonna be that's gonna be a deciding factor, and people switch into Sony. That's just in my opinion, for both Nikon and uh, Nikon and Canon. In my in my opinion, and I'm not saying this as a Sony ambassador. I'm just saying it. I'm seeing where the kind of the, the market is going to, and honestly, the the benefits of shooting Sony are just a lot in my opinion. That's why I switched them. Um, I'm not. I'm not paid to say any of this. I know there's going to be skeptics out there that believe that. But honestly, if I, if the Sony system didn't do what I wanted it to do, and the way that it's doing, then I would not be using them. It'd still be using this Canon. 60. Yeah, I, I was fine with the Canon <laughs> 60, but there were some features that I wanted that Sony provided, and the the two biggest features that I can say off the the that that affect me every single time that I shoot is the eye out of focus. Or shaky hands. I, because I have shaky hands. <laughs> and when I would have to get focused with this Canon, I had to focus and recompose. Mm -hmm. and that, that, that was always a pain. So with eye out of focus, it's so easy to shoot wide open, which is what I love to do. And re I love to review images. I don't care for people that say it's chipping. I don't care. I shoot very slow. I, do it all the time. I like to I like to relax and have, I let my, I talk to my model. And I just like to make sure that focus and everything is perfect. Um, and um, guys as you're shooting also when you're chimping it feel free to show the model it makes her more yeah. comfortable so it, it, wow, sh you it know. shows them it shows them that you're very confident in your ability to take right, good photos right, right if you're like oh no 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 um, uh, I'll show you after I'm not saying no. that's a bad thing but it's just gonna show them that you're more confident but when you show them the screen doing dial and, and dial. get them more excited which is gonna translate into the photos mm -hmm. um, but when I was talking about when it comes to seeing the photos you can check out the photo and, and the menu and everything in the EVF. That's where the viewfinder is. Um, and I always review the photos in that. And it's gotten to the point where sometimes, even with like my camera, I'm like, I grab my cam my, my phone. I, <laughs> with the cheese on I it. I grab my phone <laughs> and then I want to like look into it to see the image and oh, it's not, you can't do that. And when, I, when somebody was showing me a, uh, an image with their Canon or Nikon camera this past weekend when I did my photo walk, <laughs> I, I was like, oh, that. I was like, let me see, <laughs> and I, I put it in my eye in the, in the viewfinder, and I was expecting to see the image, but up. Uh, you, you did that don't. with my Canon. Camera. And I did that with his, and I'm like, let me see, and I look in the camera. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but um, let me see if there's any questions. Antoine, Q&A, what's uh, up, my brother? What's up, Roland? Uh, can you and Francisco come to SoCal and do a photo walk? I still have my 5D Mark II. Awesome. Thanks to you, Roland. The Mark II, brother, is still, it's still a workhorse. Yeah. Wait, uh, let's see how long we're going. It's a great camera. Keep on using it. Keep on practicing, and just we're, we're only gonna go better. for seven more minutes. So I'm gonna go with these questions, um, and don't be don't be afraid to ask a question. Q &A. I'm here to help. Yeah. We're both here to help. Yes. Okay. So let's see. Um, can we go to SoCal? I'm actually wanting to go to SoCal. Southern so, Cal. So, um, South California, <laughs> Cali Cal yeah, California, in like maybe in August, maybe. So keep that in mind. I'm, you know, follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I'll be posting, you know, when stuff happens. Um, let's see. A year from now. Okay. I would like to upgrade. Oh, oh I forget. This is from, oh, down. down okay. Uh, I would like to upgrade my lens to looking at an 85, 50, 35, 24, 70. That's a lot of cap lenses there. I'm using a Nikon D3. D3400, what's your recommendation? I already know that that's gonna be a crop sensor lens. So whatever lens that you get, let's say you get a 50, 
I don't know the crop factor when it comes to shooting with crop sensor Nikon. If, let's say it's 1.5. If you get a 50 millimeter, that's going to become a, a 75 millimeter kind of right. like the the crop factor. It's it's not going to be a 50. If you especially if you're using like a a full frame lens. So um, yeah. what I would advise, because I love prime lenses, I would advise a prime lens unless you you're shooting an event. <laughs> but even then, if you're shooting in an event, that 24 to 70 is going to be limited to 2.8. And I'm assuming with that D, D3400, because it's an older camera, it's going to not have the best low light performance. So the wider apertures of those um, other prime lenses, like the 35 and the 50, they're going to be, be they're going to benefit you more in shooting in low light. So I would say a prime lens like the 35 or the 50, more, longer than that, it's going to become too too zoomed in. So that's my answer to that. Okay, Eli. <laughs> Eli? Can, Canon can do it if they just remove the mirror with the current DSLR. I bought the Canon T6i for my students and it can go into mirrorless mode with face detection. Well, you know what, Eli? I've done, you know, and you've seen this. I've done that with my Canon Mark. Oh, you're talking about the Mark live view. Mark well, talking do, about the live view. I hit the live view. But not the EVF. They don't have ah, EVF. I do. And also the speeds are going to be different. Canon Look, shooters. I just want to say I'm excited <laughs> to see what Canon and Nikon do. Um, but I'm still gonna shoot Sony. I'm still gonna shoot Sony. Um, I'm not too heavily invested in, but I, I honestly think that so whatever Canon or Nikon comes up with, it's gonna take forever. Like it has to be the best camera that they put out in forever because they don't put cameras out as often as, as Sony does. I know it's joked around that Sony puts out cameras all the time. Six months. So like, <laughs> it's and I love that because it gives you options. When it, the A9 came out, I skipped out on the A9. I didn't need all those features that would benefit a wedding photographer or like a sports a photographer. Four thousand dollar camera, something like that. Four five hundred dollar camera, twenty frames per second, no blackout, a whole bunch of other features. But I skipped out on that because I didn't need those features. The A7 R3 came out, and I got it right away because that was something I I really really loved. The A7 III came out, and I, I got it as well just because it was a cheaper camera and I wanted a dedicated video camera yeah, so that was good so and Ashley says that I got it for her but um, that's right so yeah so I, in my opinion they need to come up with something amazing otherwise a lot of people are gonna just go to Sony like I, I like to keep my recommendations open but it's Sony is just the one that I go to all the time because I, I believe that the pros and cons are, are, are the cons are little the pros are are huge if they ever make one that's baby <laughs> Sony's cameras are about this one big I mean <laughs> look at my hands he, you can get a cage though. Uh, that's why I put look, this is why I put a, right this here. is why I put a uh, grip on my mark 4 because of my hands I mean I want to be able to hold on to it also adding that 200 millimeter f2 I mean that thing is heavy and so uh, well this is heavy too but <laughs> man just uh, uh, I want to be able to feel like it's solid and this feels solid to me but then again, that's just my opinion. And and then again, it's also, you know, it's just a tool, guys. Come on. You know, I mean, I know there's a bunch of people jumping over to Sony or all that. But, uh, you know, it really is just a tool. Hold on. DT, I don't know your full name, but DT, you said that sports photography is not good for Sony's not good for sports. I highly disagree on that. The only thing that I can agree with in like in a con kind of way is that all the lenses that you really want aren't really there yet with Sony? They're all Canon. So, um, <laughs> but you definitely have the speed and the focus and everything. So I'm not sure if I can agree, agree with that. I I highly recommend shooting with the A9. Maybe you need to test something out yeah, on sports. Yeah, I would I would have to say it's user error honestly is that because because <laughs> or you can ask that one camera guy about his experience or Jason Vong. He's currently using it. For sports. But I, I think it's it's a great camera sp specifically for sports. It was designed for that in mind. So um, I have to disagree. I'm, I'm open to, to seeing reasons as to why I would be wrong, but uh, I think it's great. It's a good, uh, good camera, specifically for sports. Let's see for portrait, for portrait. What? what uh, Ashley D Max oh, says, me, "What's up?" Let me ask everybody, <laughs> see everybody's question. Oh yeah, D Max says, "What's up?" Hello. Um, Let's be real. If Canon sponsors, no, I would not. If Canon sponsors me, I, I would. Him, sure, but I, I, I'd like to become an explorer of life. Okay, wait, I need to talk to Joe Grant. Let me do a mini rant real quick. Ah. Okay, <laughs> I switched to Sony because Canon was extremely disappointing. Like if, if you guys shoot Canon, I'm not gonna say that's bad. I'm just saying for me personally, 
I love technology. I love that Sony was innovating and creating new things. Uh, you know, Blackout is one thing that was innovating. Eye Out of Focus is still, is, is still something that not even Canon or Nikon has anything on that. Canon has an EOS M. I want to say that's the camera that the, the, the mirrorless camera that they have re recently. They actually showed in their promo video a ballerina dancing and then they had eye autofocus, but it was a single point eye autofocus. So you would get one shot with that eye in, photo, eye in focus, if anything. So I don't know why they decided to put, throw that in there. Uh, it's not continuous at all. It's not as fast as it is with Sony. Um, I shot with the Canon 60 for a while and I was waiting for the, the Canon 60 Mark II. I wanted to see what amazing new features it was gonna have that was gonna make my Canon 60 Mark I look like, like I needed to upgrade. And then it came out and it had lower dynamic dynamic range than the Canon Mark 60 Mark I. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry guys, but if you have feelings when it comes to Canon, I'm not saying that you're, you're in the wrong or anything. I'm just saying my personal feelings was disappointment. And Canon, there's interviews where people would ask Canon people, Canon reps, at WPPI or other events or um, conventions, and they just disregard the, can the questions. Sony has been very open about questions and what they're gonna do, but while still being a little bit secretive about stuff, because of course they didn't want to reveal everything. So my feelings are, I was extremely disappointed in Canon, that's why I switched, and I, was, I found that shooting Sony was just a better, extremely better for me overall. You can, you, you feel, you're, you're free to have different opinions on that. That's just my opinion. I made a video a long time ago detailing the, some of the reasons why. And the very last reason why, uh, that I had for shooting Sony was the, the, the direction that the company was going in, in innovation and just being, I don't know, a great, a good company. I, I honestly just have faith in the company. I want, to have, I want to have faith in Canon and Nikon. And I want to be proved wrong. So you, we, only time can tell on that. So, so if, but somebody mentioned that if, if Canon were to sponsor me, then I would be shoot Canon. No, uh, there's reasons why I shoot Sony and I Canon. Canon, if you were watching this, sponsor me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Anyways, yeah, I'm not a fan of negative negativity. So if you're gonna leave comments, please keep that in mind. Um, let's keep it light, guys. Um, we're all gonna end this very, very soon. I wanted to end this at like an hour and fifteen minutes. It's already <laughs> hour and seventeen. So let's hit. For no, a, I can go on and let, on. Let's and hit on. for an hour and twenty-five minutes, eight more <laughs> minutes, and then we'll go ahead and, and end this. But okay, let's see if there's any questions. Um, <laughs> drop some knowledge. On you. <laughs> yeah, he's, this guy's full of knowledge. Every time I bu I want to buy something, I don't bother researching it because I know somebody's already done it. And so I'm just like, hey, just send me a link from Amazon and I'll just buy it. Yeah, honestly, guys, I'm not, I shoot Sony. I'm now in Sony Ambassador, but there was a point in time that I wanted to shoot with Canon, with Nikon and Sony, just so I can be very knowledgeable about each system and kind of have that knowledge base so I can help everybody as much as I can. But of course, like when I shot Sony, I was really interested in that and Canon or and Nikon both didn't have features I liked, like the, the, the electronic viewfinder and the IL focus, I'm gonna be repeating those two features because those are the ones I use all the time. Um, they didn't have anything that, in, in regards to that, so I just stuck with Sony. Um, but again, guys, I don't have like any sort of preference to only shooting Sony. If you guys shoot Canon or Nikon, I'm happy for you, and you know, <laughs> continue doing that. Do what works for you. For you. Amir, thanks yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, um, Eli, both Eli and Roland, who I shoot with, shoot with a lot, they shoot Canon still. So yeah, you know. Yeah, I, but we do test the waters with Sony once in a while. Yeah, so if, I know uh, Eli's yeah. been doing some uh, natural, puro natural light vato. Yeah, <laughs> has been doing uh, some yeah. lighting, some uh, to work with his uh, a what the latest one, the A seven three. Yeah, yeah, he's been shooting with that. So uh, he's been doing really good with uh, natural light. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some Joseph. of these last questions, and then we're gonna end this video. Um, Joey, I have noticed that when shooting on my A7 III with my Explore 600, I find often the photo looks exposed properly, but when I upload it in Lightroom, it's underexposed by Starper 2. That is something that, if you guys are wondering as well, that's something that I would um, equate under user error, in the sense that um, the brightness of the LCD screen is something that is gonna be dependent on, on any camera system. Like even with Canon or Nikon, whatever, if you use an LCD brightness that's too high, 
and you shoot, take a shot and it looks fine in there, but then you take it to the computer and it looks different, that's dependent on the LCD brightness. I always have my LCD brightness on the highest um, and then I always aim for something that's like, that looks to my eye slightly above like a good exposure because when I bring it back to my computer, I know that it's gonna look exactly where I want it to, which is a good exposure. So yeah. that that's dependent on your LCD brightness. Yeah, I my uh, my monitors are. I use the Spider Pro that I pretty much calibrated both of my. I have two monitors. I have the the iMac, and then I have a Dell monitor that are I know two different products, but uh, I have them side by side. And so what I did is I just calibrated my monitors, and when I post it everywhere, the photo is just as exact as it came out on my computer. So yeah, but yeah, that's probably what you need to do. Yeah, it's, there's always going to be different factors that no matter what camera you use it's going to like alter your, your images, like yeah. camera calibration, LCD brightness. I can't think of anything else, but there are some other features. No, I, another thing like I do, I, I like to shoot maybe one stop below of what the normal exposure is because I can always bring all that up and post. Yeah. It's better to shoot below than shoot yes. over. It's better to shoot underexposed and overexposed. Yeah. But, but with, specifically with Canon, they have a lot of highlight recovery, but yeah. Of course, you don't want to tread that line where you might get an overexposed shot where you can't recover those highlights. So yeah, keep that in mind. Better to go under than over. Um, question. Israel, our photographer, yes. I will be in Atlanta. I'm coming into Atlanta. Oh, I think I know Israel uh, from Facebook. Okay, yeah, I have him on Facebook. Yeah, too. yeah. Israel, I'll be there. there. I will be there Saturday. I'm going to be, uh, actually, I'll be there Sunday. And we start with Ramiro on Monday, oh. Tuesday, and we go all the way to Wednesday. But somebody asked me. Oh. I'll be there Thursday, so get, if you're not going to be part of the uh, the workshop, met, uh, DM me on Facebook. Yeah. I have you on Facebook, Mission. and maybe we could go have a drink or something, or you know, talk some fruit punch. To, uh, fruit <laughs> punch for him. But talk about you know maybe we could talk shop, talk about photography, yeah. something that I'm always passionate right. about. Somebody or said, some ideas. Did you guys say something about the 8400 Pro? Or was that a typo? Yes, there, there. I, oh, we didn't talk um, about I mentioned that earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and answer some other questions right now. But earlier in the live stream, there were, um, there were, uh, we did talk about that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the description area, the um, the link to the article on DIYphotography.net that talks about the the 8400 Pro. It was barely leaked yesterday, mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's something that's like, whoa, what's going on? I, I, you know, I always wonder why they, you know, they leak it. I mean, it's, is it something that somebody was typing, a, you know, a full report on and I accidentally hit submit and try to take it off? I mean, I think that's what happened with the Pro one. The well, I think it's just like sometimes people make mistakes. I think Sony yeah. just today, Sony Pictures, not the... Like they just re they meant to do, um, upload a trailer to a movie and they released the whole movie. <laughs> that was like the first time I ever seen something yeah. like that. But um, let's go to some other questions real quick. Uh, I Joseph, I'm not sure you said any suggestions. I don't, oh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, I answered that already. Okay. Um, yeah, just a shooting on a stop. Yeah. Yes. Um, where do you guys print print your prints for the models? My co my my cousin, my friend Eli uses his Canon Pixma Pro one. 100 yeah, and that's the one I actually just bought and I plan to make videos yeah. on it so that I can give you guys tips and stuff I use Miller's lab so Miller's lab if you're watching this sponsor me too, please add a wrong pics You guys need to tell them because I you know I the, They do excellent work for me and they match uh, Whatever I have on my screen matches to my prints and it's just awesome. I know it's a little bit pricey, yeah. but you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, there's it's, a lot of companies out there. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of companies the, out and there. And one thing, one thing that I did when I was trying to figure out which company to, to print from, they have sometimes when you make a new account, they have um, free samples, like a free eight by tens that might have watermarks just so you can see the quality. So you guys can check that out. Um, so Michael Maestro, I wanted to say something, but he said, oh. truthfully, Canon, Fuji, Nikon, and Sony are great companies that make great gear. Yeah, it doesn't matter the camera, it, it matters who's behind the camera. That's it's always going to be the, the biggest factor. Israel, uh, which one is better? Sigma 135 or 85 Art? I would well, say... I've, I would, I've tested the 85 Art uh, before. Uh, I haven't have done it, no, no. I have the 85 Art, but I haven't tried the 135 Art yet. What's your... Have you tried that one? I, I, I got the 135 Art. I sold it. I, I wanted it to kind of there be like go. my... When I shot Canon, I had the 135 F2. That was my favorite lens of all time. So when 135 1.8 came out, came out, yeah, that one. 
Um, Guys, like, it's less than a thousand bucks. It's nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Yeah, and it's not oh. really, it's not really heavy. No, like, like the the one thirty-five one eight was a little heavy, and because I was adapting it, the focus speeds weren't just there where I wanted them to be at. That's the only reason why I switched. Uh, yeah. I, I sold it. A lot of the photos on my website, RolandSanchez.com, uh, are shot with this and my Mark II. Antoine, I, still, I have used my Mark II, and thank you for that comment earlier. It just makes me happy that somebody else is still using their Mark II. Man, brother, use the use the heck out of that camera. Right. I use it a lot. Somebody said, "How's your experience with bounce flash with Sony?" I love bouncing flash. I do it all the times at any event that I have to do, regardless if it's big or small. If it's a bigger event, I'll use my 8201 left hand and I'll bounce it like this. <laughs> I'll just use my, you know, it's not that hard to do. Or sometimes I'll have like a, a an auto stand, a chin stand or a flash points auto stand next to me and I'll just have it aimed up and a little bit back here, a little bit to the left or right, and I'll just do that. So I love bouncing flash, regardless of the system. Um, Amir, drink some keto beers. Hey brother, if you find me a keto <laughs> beer, let me know the brand, man, because uh, I have no. Let me see real quick. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're gonna end it up there unless somebody else has any other questions. But yeah, I have a lot of videos coming out soon. Uh, guys, encourage Roland to make videos, and I know my friend Eli's gonna make videos as well. Yeah, I think I'm gonna test it out by doing like just behind the scenes videos because a lot of people are, uh, what I've been doing in the past is when I do these wide angle shots, I've been posting just a little clip on me photography or doing the photography and the way my lighting is set up. And it's been going really well with uh, you know with you guys watching this and clicking on there and watching the video, uh, but I'm gonna probably do the video like how do I get how do you get the shot you know title it that maybe how how what did I do to get the shot what did I do to get the model what did I, how did I decide the location how yeah. did I decide. Uh, you know, why am I using the 200 lens versus the 135? Yeah, real quick, guys. I want to guys, do something like that for you. Um, if you guys have any sort of feedback on the whole setup that we're doing here, like this whole like kind of talk show kind of thing, I do yeah. want to make this into a podcast. I, I want to dedicate some time later in the week to kind of edit these videos and make the um, make them into podcast form just because you, the quality is low for one. Yeah, So, so it's just going to be good so you guys can actually hear us and stuff. Um, I do... Uh, I do want to plan to eventually have like maybe Ashley here over here asking us some of the questions. Oh, so like can, a talk show. Kind of like a talk show. Kind of like us sitting around having just have having just because honestly I wanted to start doing these things to talk to you guys and because honestly before we even went live today and with Eli uh, with Eli and with Jeff I talk about photography all the time yeah. with these guys. I got here all the time. We talked for like an hour trying to set this up just about yeah we're talking about photography, new products that so much came things. out because Joey. Uh, if we turn this camera around, he has like a whole <laughs> shelf full of yeah. products. So it's like a candy store for photographers. Yeah, uh, we could talk about photography all the time. I can lose my breath and my voice <laughs> talking about photography. That's why I wanted to make these things so you guys can hear. You guys can get an insight into like my thoughts or their thoughts about certain different products. So that's, a, that's my main reason for making this kind of show. So if you guys have any feedback on improving what we can do to make it better, then let us know. Um, uh, a mirror on that new speed light is that the one that rotates uh, when you hit automatic it automatically rotates I don't know I've seen it I've I have seen that one at WPPI I just haven't gotten my yeah. hands on that one yeah honestly that that um that speed light somebody mentioned about the Amir um I thought it was I thought that was something that that was cool with Canon they're yeah. innovating with because that's the first time that's ever happened but I could have used that at a pageant yeah. I shot the other uh, yeah. week ago but, because um, we were, <laughs> lighting was terrible. I, I like to bounce. So, like, what might be ideal to that flash for bouncing light might not be something that's ideal for me. So it's an it's an it's an it's one of those cases where like, do you want to use TTL? Or do you want to shoot manually? Where you have control is going to be manual. So I, I would invest in something like that, especially because of the price. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I can get like several speed lights or uh, strobes for the price of that speed light. Yeah, and Amir, I'm surprised that I don't have 10,000 followers, my friend. You guys can help me repost my photos. Uh, somebody, I don't know. <laughs> somebody said, how do I stay current on any upcoming workshops? If you follow me on Facebook, if you follow me on Instagram, on the, I on your, or uh, on my Learn to Light group on mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, it's called Learn to Light and Off Camera Flash Lighting Lighting Community. I believe that's what it's called. Yes. Um, I'll leave a link, link in the description area. Um, so you guys can check it out and join but I post all my upcoming workshops and stuff in my lighting group on my Facebook profile and on my Instagram so you guys can check that stuff out there all right 
Thank you guys for much. To, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hey guys, keep, keep here. on practice, practice, practice. Are you introverts? Don't be shy, man. Hang yeah. out. You know, get out of your comfort. You have to get out of your comfort zone. We both were introverts. He was an intro. He's well. No, I. He, he learned from <laughs> me how to yeah. ex be an extrovert. So but, uh, yeah, um, practice. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'll have different guests coming on to to share their thoughts about anything that we or anything that we talk about that's coming out. So. Uh, take care guys. Peace out. And we'll see you guys in the next um, Roll. Next, the next episode. Rolling out. Ro and I'm going to start saying peace now. Peace guys. <laughs>